Okay, so the general characteristics of plant acid is that it has a lifetime longer than a year. Remember, short term and long term, the definition, the um, threshold basically is if anything is, has a lifetime less than a year, it's short term asset. Longer than a year is long term asset. Relatively speaking, compared to inventory individual units, um, long term asset, each and every unit, meaning each and every machinery, equipment, is relatively more expensive. Okay, now. A key point here, the first bullet point is that, remember, you have to keep in mind that plant asset, we're not purchasing it for the purpose of reselling to other customers. Okay, it's not like inventory that you purchase in and then you mark up a price, you resell to customer to gain gross profit. Okay, plant asset, the purpose really is to support either um, offices or warehouses. So, for example, you may have forklift machines have different equipments to help move around inventory in the warehouse or within businesses. You have vehicles to help you ship the items to customers. Okay, these are the things we call plant assets. So they are not there to resell to other customers to gain profit, but they're there to support daily business operations. So other things could be simply just furniture, desks, chairs, anything you can physically see by your eyes in the office, in the warehouse. Long term, uh, that can be used for more than a year, is considered plant asset. Okay, so it lasts for several year, years, and later on, after its main useful years has been, after the uh, main years that has been used up, when we use the assets in the business, we may want to sell it or trade it with other assets. Okay, so just keep in mind that it's not there to resell to other customers, it's there to support either the production cycle, the sales cycle, or administrative offices. Now when we sell and trade assets, and we'll talk about this on uh, next Monday, you may be able to identify gains and losses of asset meaning that when you sell something, definitely you're getting cash or other type of uh, reward from others. We want to compare the cash amount with the current asset's value and see if there's gains and losses with that selling or trading transaction. So if you still recall in Chapter 5, we talked about a different type of income statement. Remember multi-step income statement? So we would start from sales, just like a regular income statement, and then we subtract cost of goods sold. So then, what do we reach after that? Inventory, right? Uh, close. Not close enough. Sales minus cost of goods sold gives you a first subtotal called gross profit, right? And then once you have gross profit, then you have all the other operating expenses. Remember, there's selling expenses, general expenses. After that, you get operating income. And I mentioned that operating income could be different from net income in the case there's gains and losses or interest expense or interest revenue. So remember in multi-step income statement, the very last section, other revenue, other expenses, this is one of the category that we didn't, you didn't understand that time because I mentioned that will be covered <coughs> this in chapter nine. So gains and losses is part of that other section. Meaning that those are minor expenses, minor revenues that may not necessarily happen in each and every season. Because if we do not sell or trade plant asset, we don't have this category. So this only exists whenever an asset we're trying to um, either throw it away, dispose it, or sell it or trade it with other type of assets. Then we'll consider any gains and losses for plant assets. Okay, so this category here, gains and losses on plant assets, falls under the third section of multi-step income statement. So if a company has this category, then after operating income, you would consider would add gains or minus losses, then you get to net income. Okay, so it's reported also um, an income statement. It's a type of revenue and expense, just it's related to plan assets. Okay, 